Welcome to Amazing Histories! Today on Amazing Histories, we check out Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States. Yes, now Andrew Jackson's an interesting character. I think uh, Donald Trump's been likened to Andrew Jackson. So perhaps Donald Trump's going to start shooting people and hanging Englishmen and killing Indians. And perhaps he'll want his head on, a, uh, on the $20 bill, or at least um, the $3 the bill. The $3 bill, yes. Keep watching Amazing Histories to find out. Is Donald Trump really a second Andrew Jackson? And why? Well, they're both supposedly self-made men. Andrew Jackson was born to Irish immigrants in 1767. His father died immediately, and his mother and brother died of smallpox and cholera 13 years later during the American War of Independence. Him and his brother were captured by the British as rebels, and Jackson, 13 years old, remember, refused to clean the boots of the officer. This earned him a slash across the face with a sabre that left him with a very low opinion of the British. After that, he bounced about various relatives, and by 17, he started working for a law firm and studying law. This being the frontier, the law was flexible, so a cocky Irishman with a chip on his shoulder and a quick temper and a tendency to threaten opposing counsel with a pistol was probably someone you'd want on your side. And so when he was merely 21, the first letter we find written by him was this one. My character you have injured, and further you have insulted me in the presence of a court and large audience. I therefore call upon you as a gentleman to give me satisfaction for the same. He's challenging someone to a duel? Yes, he's uh, challenging a lawyer to a duel for making fun of him because he knew so little law that he had to consult a beginner's law book while in court. Donald Trump might be cocky and spoiling for a fight, and his tweets might have a tinge of Andy Jackson, but he's hardly a self-made man of the people. Donald Trump's father gave him a million bucks to set up his property development business, and I bet his first deal was with people who worked with his father. No, uh, President Trump didn't exactly start at the bottom like Jackson, but in many respects they both represent the American dream. What, multiple marriages, bad taste and an orange toupee? Well, let's put it this way, he only married once, but not without scandal. His wife, Rachel, was still married to someone else. So she was a bigamist? Well, Andrew Jackson shot and killed the last guy who accused her of that. In the duel, Jackson was hit in the chest and lived with a bullet for the rest of his life. He managed to stay standing long enough to shoot his pistol twice. <laughs> he was in very poor taste and not exactly playing by the rules. Did he grab them by the pussy? Contemporary sources were a little circumspect when it came to such matters though he was known to consort with prostitutes, notoriously inviting a couple of prostitutes to a Christmas ball when he worked in a law office in North Carolina. It scandalized the town and he had to apologize to all respectable ladies. However, he has been called a Southern gentleman because he defended the honor of Peggy Eaton, the Secretary of War's wife, who was accused of being, well, no better than a whore. She'd been Eaton's mistress and married him when he attained office. As scandals go, it's pretty tame, but no respectable Washingtonian would even speak to her. He liked this woman hot and troubled. The impression that I get is that he didn't much like women, but rather liked his wife. She was a pipe-smoking, hard-faced, frontiers woman and let us say, full of vigor and very troubled. She was very religious and prone to crying fits because of the mean things people kept saying about her. She was also annoyed about the amount of time Jackson spent away from home doing things like killing Indians and Englishmen during the 1812 war with the British. Not exactly a trophy wife, and I'd say that was a big difference that Trump has no military background. Yes, and probably why Trump's relationships with Russia is causing him problems. Jackson's political and legal career was on the rocks. His unfortunate agreement to join Aaron Burr in his planned armed insurrection in Spanish territory nearly had him accused of treason. It is against the law for private individuals to conduct foreign policy. However, his success in the 1812 war against the Creek Indians and the Battle of New Orleans put Jackson right back in the frame as a solid patriot though later on he did go chasing Seminole Indians into Florida, where two British agents had been arming them. He captured the town of San Marks and hanged the British agents. One might say that uh, he was still carrying out Aaron Bear's plan to create an insurrection against the Spanish. 
a plan that nearly got Burr hanged. And so after that, Jackson had only one way to go. He was either going to be hanged or become president. President Monroe had to apologise to the Spanish and hand back the territory, and even worse, in Jackson's eyes, had to hand over the territory to the, Mac the Indians. But then, two years later, Monroe and the Spanish came to an agreement, and he gave them $5 million for Florida, then offered the governorship to Jackson, who lasted a few months before the endless quarrels with the locals had him resign. But then he was being portrayed as an American hero, and the presidency called. So Trump has to invade a small country? Well, he's already president, so he doesn't have to. But the, like Trump, all Jackson's past actions keep coming back to haunt him. And it is something as banal as the uh, Peggy Eaton affair that nearly finishes him. It was seen as an excuse by his entire administration to oust him after only one term. But he sacked them all, leaving him with one powerful ally, Martin Van Buren, who took over as vice president, and some might consider him to be the brains behind the second administration. Is that what we have to look forward to with Donald? Well, both of them claimed that Washington had turned into a place run for the benefit of a national our upper class elite and had a running battle with Washington insiders. What about his relationship with the press? Uh, how many people came to his inauguration? Donald Trump made a big deal about it. There were disputes about the numbers, uh, but there were plenty of reports that it turned into a riot of people from the backwoods of Tennessee. After taking the oath, the crowd had rushed forward to shake his hand, and he had to mount his horse and push his way through them. Uh, whether invited or not, they followed him to the White House and crashed the party. Thousands of dollars of broken cut glass china ensued, and Jackson had to escape being crushed to death via a window. Washington society was horrified. But for a man who faced down a British regiment with a bunch of slaves, Indians, pirates and backwards militiamen outside of New Orleans and sent them running down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico, it was all in a day's work. Let the boys have their party. But how many were there? Well, on the one hand, people thought the more the worst it was. because. That meant that the rabble were taking over the country from the genteel and educated. But on the other hand, it meant he was popular. And so some played it down and some talked it up. 5,000, 10,000, 100,000. But the point was they were the deplorables. I'm getting the feeling that the election campaign wasn't very polite either. Yes, there, well, the parallels go deep. In 1823, Jackson ran as Tennessee's preferred candidate against three other candidates preferred in other parts of the country. The Electoral College couldn't decide and it went to the House of Representatives. John Quincy Adams proved to be the sharper operator and made what Jackson called a corrupt bargain and thus stole the election. When the 1828 election came, Jackson was out for revenge and it became the dirtiest election ever, with Jackson accusing John Quincy Adams of all manner of financial corruption, and then crying foul when they attacked him and his family. It so upset Jackson's wife that she had a heart attack and died, which did not make Jackson less angry. Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, and Abraham Lincoln, and many of our greatest presidents fought with the media and called them out, oftentimes on their lies. At least Donald Trump doesn't own slaves. Yet. But he was a redhead. Jackson was more light brown than a hardcore redhead, uh, but his vice president, Martin Van Buren, was a redhead, and maybe the ideas that Jackson was a redhead stemmed from a bit of confusion and the lack of color photography. So what you're saying is that Donald Trump's hair could run for vice president? Maybe even one day he could run for presidency. That's amazing! <laughs> this is amazing history, so what do you expect? <laughs>